Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. You're watching Christian Adventure Gamer. I am Daniel the Paladin. And I'm Alex the Road. And so we just got this package in the mail. And I wanted to do an unboxing of this package. So you guys can see what comes in if you backed the newest Kickstarter for Folklore. So this is the Folklore Kickstarter bundle number three, the Executioner. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Folklore, it's actually called the Folklore the Affliction. And so it's a part board game, part RPG uh, style game. I'd say it's probably 60% RPG and about 40% board game. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. This came all the way from China and then shipped to Florida and then Florida sent it to me from Quartermaster Logistics. So thank you Quartermaster for that. And thank you for Greenbrier Games for the folklore game. So I'm a big fan of it. So as you can see this is a pretty big box. So hopefully nothing is damaged in here and as you can see we have some things right on the top. Um, Folklore Shadow Pack. Looks like it's got some kind of pewter, possibly pewter figurine or something. I don't know. Let's uh, open this up. This is right on top. There's some cards. I think this is like the uh, traveling marker. So that, if that's the traveling marker, that's actually really cool. I'm going to take it out of the bag so you can see it better. got the different symbols of the afflictions so as you can see there it's kind of shiny so light shimmering off of it it's got a couple swords on the back of it almost looks like a pen because it's so small and it's you know heavy so obviously it's metal so I don't know if you can see those affliction symbols in there different types of creatures in the world of folklore there's all those swords in the back so really really nice it's got some books down here, and looks like a bag of gold, possibly. So yeah, here you go, Alex. You can take a look at that. I got some cards. I'm not gonna bother going through all these cards. Obviously, that's just silly. There's a cauldron of summoning, though. I can see at the top, which is marked. So that looks like that is a possible road. It says receive the crown of thorns artifacts. I'm not sure what kind of card. It looks like it's like one of the uh, road cards, like there's road and off-road, on-road or off-road cards, looks like it's one of those dog cards. So there's that. So here's this. I'm surprised that there's nothing along the sides to help keep it safe. So I'm kind of anticipating some damage to these boxes because of that. This looks like that got pushed in a little bit there in the corner. But this is the newest expansion here, Fall of the Spire expansion. It's uh, designed by Will Donovan and Nick Blaine. So look at that. And this has got um, punch outs, obviously. Uh, I got the miniature pack, so I'm going to have the miniatures for it, but I think the Greenbrier Games is saving money by doing the punch outs, the standees. And so it also has got like a boat um, tile on there. So look, there's a guard dog. Alex likes doggos. Yay. And there's a Jenny, or Jen, so it's Jen, but it's a genie. Uh, Magma Garden, uh, I'm sorry, Magma Guardian, and so, yep, there's a good size well, there. To it. This, is, oh. this is supposed to carry all the miniatures that for the game, oh, so boy. that's awesome. And that's it for the box, so I'm going to go ahead and move that off the side. I'm going to move this camera down, focus it a little bit better, and so my assumption is that this should have the fall of Spire Miniatures in it already, which I think I can see them. Alex, would you mind getting out the folklore game over there? So we can go ahead and start packing the miniatures into this thing. And this is the Creature Crate. Look at this thing. The artwork is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. However, there are, I can see some, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but from the other box sitting on top of it and not having any foam, I can tell that this has been smashed in. I can feel it and I can see it. Uh, and plus not having any foam in the box. So I can see how it, it concaves all around here. So hopefully it doesn't cause any issue. So there it tells you how to set everything up in there. Let's go ahead and take this off. 
So I think this is going to be definitely helpful when playing the game. Uh, that way we can just go to the specific um, expansion, per se, and be able to pull out those miniatures. And I can see here, I don't know if you guys can see in this uh, camera, I'm going to uh, zoom in. This drawer is actually popped out because of all the weight that was sitting on top of it. And this one is too. But here are the miniatures for this expansion. I wish they pulled out a little bit easier. That's nice. I really like how they provided a small little, uh, I guess you'd call it like a miniature placement page. I don't know what you'd call this. It's like a, it all it is basically just a picture of where to put all the miniatures in this expansion box. So we got a crocodile here, another crocodile that goes here. We have a goat man. A goat man. It's probably like a satyr. Well, Sater would have it would be half human, half goat. This is just a goat. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And so we have a scorpion. Yeah, there he goes. That's how he goes in there. But not bad. I mean, this traveled all the way from China, and there was only what uh, one crocodile and a scorpion out of place, and this out of place too. This looks like it's a genie, or or gin. So as you guys can see, here let me. Uh, there we go. Yep. And then here is some kind of goop, some kind of ooze, as you can see. And, uh, here is a plague. Looks like a plague doctor or something. Does he have a bird mask? He has a bird mask. Uh, I can't tell if that's bent or if that's supposed to be bent, but it looks like it's possibly a rope that's holding onto a skull. Uh, but yeah, that's a really cool design there. You want to look at it? Yeah. And then here are the heroes. I'll just pick it up this way. So obviously you can see the various heroes. So there you go. And the different heroes. Another head on, looks like rope or something walking around. It's kind of weird creatures. There's another djinn. This looks like an Ifrit. There. And then there is that monster, that guardian. Looks like something from um, Shadows of Brimstone. That's what that looks like. Looks like something from Shadows of Brimstone. So there. All these cool miniatures. Again, uh, this box is obviously warped. Um, you can see that this one is not. This one starts to... This one is, and this one's probably, so it's like, it's like the weight from it, obviously, push these out. And so, I don't know if maybe taking like a hair dryer will help loosen up or tighten up these corners, because it's basically it's just like a, a tape that they use for the corners. But, I mean, it still will work. I just got to be careful not to pull too hard, because I'm afraid that it'll rip here if you're not careful. So, oh, uh, well, this has got more stuff in it. I just thought it was going to be for just the ghosts. Now obviously, again, it's got a picture showing where everything needs to go. Uh, you have to separate your giant tree in order to put it in there. So hopefully you guys haven't glued yours together. All right. We've got this big... It's a Bigfoot! Literally, look, it's a Bigfoot. I don't know if you guys can... <laughs> hey. It's Bigfoot. That's cool. I only zoom in. <gasps> what do you see? I found one. A guard dog? No, that's actually. Three witches. It's like the fates. Oh yeah, it looks Either like the fates. The, uh... Oh, let me see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's the fates. It's got an eyeball. Mm -hmm. Something there. And he's got a gold coin and dancing with a the snake. There. Yeah. For the right here. Um. Look, it's Maleficent. Not really. <laughs> I'm not sure succubus. what that is. Could be a succubus, but it has no wings. Mm, that's true. Um, some kind of hellish creature. He's got a butt. That's weird. And then we 
got uh, a Lich. Lich Lord. Ooh. Looks like his staff is kind of chipped out. Looks like maybe when they were trimming off the flash, they bit into it, but it caused it to bow. And so maybe I can heat that up and hopefully hold it in place and let it stand. So, but yeah, that's, there's a Lich Lord right there. We got some ghost figures that go with the uh, Fall of the Spire. Looks like either a wolf or a guard dog. Um, it says guard dog. So you have an actual guard dog yeah. miniature. Uh, we don't want no dogs in here. So you, oh, I'm kidding. I know you, you're oh, interested in guard dog. Uh, man with a looks like a broadsword, but it's kind of bent, which is fine. I can fix that one. That one's, that has no issues. This is a mercenary, so you can hire a mercenary. Does that say Bigfoot on it? Cryptid. Cryptid, definitely Bigfoot. I don't care who you are. That's that's Bigfoot. Yeah. So nice, actually. Yeah. All right. So I'm putting everything away in this box, the miniatures, and I was able to just take the packaging with all the miniatures out of the actual core box, take it out and put it directly in this box, and it fit nicely. Uh, I was afraid that I was going to have to try to make sure everything was finagled into this tray in order to get it to fit. But I was able to take this tray out and put the other tray in, and now everything is there, it looks like. So that's great. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, we'll back to this tray, because I'm trying to put everything in there. So obviously, this I put this abomination in here. Uh, instead of using a black plastic um, token or uh, miniature base, I glued it to an acrylic clear one. However, I had this arm on it, which I put it in there, and it broke it off, because this is not designed for this to have this arm on it, which according to the picture on here, it actually had, what did I do with that picture? Oh, here it is. Looks like he had this smaller arm here actually on him. Uh, but I chose to put this on there, which then there's actually no room for this. So when I put this in, it just snapped it off. So that's very unfortunate. Um, however, he should have had this arm on him as well, here, on this side. But I said I put the other arm on, uh, and so there's no actual extra space to fit these arms in there, which is kind of sad, because if you look, they give you special room for the other pieces of the big tree, but not the abomination there. So that is unfortunate. There. Uh, and obviously... Uh, it has one of the scarecrows in there, but I have multiple scarecrows for some reason, so I'm not sure where those are going to go. Um, but let's say I put this back here for right now. I'm just going to set this on top, actually. And so I switched out this other tray here. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to try to see if this would fit over it like it should with the other ones. And it does, so that's good. So I could possibly just pop it in there. However, I want to see how these miniatures fit in this other tray. So I'm just going to move that to the side. Put it up here. Let me move that over there. And hopefully there's room for these other miniatures. I'm not sure where they're going to go. I got this book here, and I got this guy here, and I have no clue where they're going to go. All right, so let's say I take this guy here. He is the uh, exorcist, you know, pastor, priest, whatever you want to call him. Um, he kind of fits in there, not too bad. It uh, looks like there's too much space for him, really. Whereas over here, there's actually it, he fits really nice in there. He fits down in there because it actually goes down with his um, Asperger. I think it's what it's called or As, As Asperger Isle or I, I mispronounced this before and I was corrected, so I can't remember what that's called. But that sits down in there really nice there. Over here, this new tray. It doesn't really sit down nicely. It actually stands up, so I, I wish it would have been more like this. Uh, and if I turn him this way, obviously he doesn't fit. Okay, let's try the um, witch hunter here. Well, that's not too bad. He doesn't fit in there the greatest. His uh, crossbow here sticks up a little bit above this black rim. So I don't think I like that, whereas here he sits down in. So I wish that he would have went a little deeper on those or something. I don't understand why it's not fitting the same way. Uh, we have, that goes to another expansion. Uh, also, in this one, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but uh, this ghost figure 
does not fit down in there well. She's supposed to fit in there kind of like this, but she, she kind of protrudes some. So I have to really kind of force her in there. According to this, she should fit in there like this. But if you notice, see how she's not, you know, when I touch her, she kind of pops out. So that's that's uh, kind of unfortunate. So, and it looks like, and even in here in the picture, it's not sitting flush against the plastic on the base. So that's weird that they did that. So it's not too bad. It could be worse. So um, let's see a tree. How does the tree fit? So this tree should go here. And that doesn't fit too bad. That's actually pretty good. I like that. This one here, obviously. So that fits there like this. Let's say this this uh, cultist guy who has some nasty white gold or uh, hardened glue on him. Looks like it dripped all the way down his uniform, which I never noticed that before. Almost looks like Elmer's glue. Um, but th that's besides the point. He should go right here. So that fits in there not too badly. So there's another one. Uh, we got a skeleton here. And that guy will go here. Yeah, that is going to move around a lot. Whereas here, it's actually really, he's setting there pretty good. These are just kind of flat. So he just kind of rocks. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, he just kind of rocks in there. See that? Yeah. You can out of there pretty easy. And obviously the tree's sitting there really nice. So I don't know if I'm a big fan of these here. Um, but yeah, so another skeleton obviously would go here. He just kind of rocks, whereas in here, obviously, he, there's a lot better groove for him. So I think I may just keep this. But yeah, um, the new molding for the miniatures, uh, not I'm not a big fan for. However, I like how they they are able to make more room. But I like the fact that I can actually just take the tray out and just stick it in here. So that that's very helpful too. All right, so I started moving over to the dark tail stuff, and this figure is supposed to go right here next to this book. And, like, she does not fit unless I bend her. Even then, like, I'm pretty sure her staff's not supposed to be bent like that. And so I have to, like, really force her in there and then turn that to get it in there. Well, what makes you think I'd want to have a bent staff for her? Especially if I'm going to paint it. So that is... I don't like that. They could have moved some other stuff around, possibly just to make room for her so I don't I may just take her out of this because you can't stand her up like this you can't move her in like this you can't even put her in upside down because there's just not enough room lengthwise you know um, is she supposed to have a staff that's bent over by her head or standing up straight because it makes sense to be standing up straight so I don't like that uh, the book should go this way and then we have a, a lichen. So where is that giant lichen at? Here it is. He goes there, and then we should have this giant. And he does not fit in there at all either, as you can see. I, mean, I have him down in there like like that, but as you can see, he his everything is just sticking up. I can't push him down without forcing him, so I don't think I like these new trays. They don't work well. Um, hopefully Greenbrier Games can make good on that. They can change that uh, because I want to make sure that everything gets in there and gets in there right. I don't want everything bent up. So, Alright, so what else should I try? Um, I got this guy in there. He was kind of a snug fit when I got him in there. Then we have a, I'm not sure what this is, but he's supposed to go there, so that's not too bad. Uh, we have this witch lady here. Um, that should go there like that. Obviously there's actually four spaces for four flames, which in the original there was just four, there was three, a slot for three, then one just hanging out somewhere. Um, then we have these guards here. That's, uh, that's not too bad. The only problem I see is that and you can see in the picture too, uh, the staff or his spear hangs out past the tray. So what's going to happen is when I go to put this lid on, it's going to hit that tray, causing it to bend down, causing him to pop out and be all bent. So I don't like that at all. Um, so I, I, 
I wish they would have caught that. You know, I can either force them this way to be the bend his spear that way. There's just, you know, I, I, there's just he did not need to be there. He didn't belong there. Or even if they would have just made the box uh, just a little bit wider, that may have helped uh, in fitting some of these pieces in. Uh, and we have this here. This uh, I'm not sure what it is. Some kind of witch, not witch, but spirit, evil woman, spirit thing. So this should go there. Fits in there. That fits there. Um, now this one's going to go here too, so obviously there's room for him there, kinda. It doesn't fit there very well either. So, yeah, so his spear just sticks up. This is kind of curved, so this is not going to fit very well. So some things fit, some things do not fit. Like obviously this does not fit, this does not fit, this does not fit. The um, Obviously you can see this well, walling around here. Uh, most of these fit, well, obviously this is the original tray, but uh, I'm wondering what else may not have fit if I try to move everything over. Uh, and here you can see that obviously this didn't fit because the arms I chose, this one fits okay. Like I said, it just it pops out a little bit. Um, so just a few, well actually his arms in the way here trying to close this, so I'll end up snapping his arm down like put him in a box. Uh, so yeah. Hopefully these are some things that are just minor and can be fixed really well, or you know, fixed easily. Um, so yeah, well, obviously there's not going to be room for her in this box because they had it set up for her to be in the other packaging for here. So hey, so I'll just cut it open. I'm kidding. I wouldn't do it like that. I see your eyes get big over there. There's a. Low tactic card, what's that about? Alright. I just want to take a quick gander and see what is in here. Obviously, there is the story journal, so I'm not going to show you any of that because that's for not for peeping eyes. It's for my eyes only. Don't want to give any spoilers. Uh, some new tokens, obviously, I can see these. Uh, look wonderfully made. Let's see how they pop out. Not too bad. It kind of hangs in there. Hopefully it doesn't rip off. Oh, that's good. Uh, let's try one of these uh, goblets. Not bad. It, they could have been uh, cut a little bit better. They're just die cut. Uh, more bandages. It's a trophy, huh? That's what it says, trophy. Not bad. Mm -hmm. There's a Stand for a gator. Get me a gator and we'll rob my gator to the sun zip. Uh -huh. uh, looks like some kind of magic portal there. Uh, quicksand hazard. Ooh, what's this? Uh, initiative board. There's an initiative board, guys. That's awesome. That, that's. I think I think that is something the game needed. Uh, it says ten goes first. So like, in. The other, like in the regular version, I guess you'd say, uh, you would, each party, I should say, or each team, so you have good and you have the monsters, You everyone has to roll to see who goes first, like as far as, do the, the good go first or do the enemies go first? And so if there's an initiative, I think that would make more sense, because it's more, like, it feels like an RPG in, in a box, in a board game box. So I think that's good to have the initiative board there, and it has some information on the back. So that tells you how to do that. So I'm going to set that aside. Here are all the standees. Uh, and it's got all the standees from the original game and the uh, Dark Tales, it looks like. Because there's the, um, well, it says Rogue Witch Hunter. So maybe these are just, uh, I bet what these are is these are the heroes that gone rogue, that turned bad or something. Because that would make sense why they say Rogue Telepath, Rogue Witch Hunter, Rogue Butcher, Rogue, rogue Exorcist. Yeah, can't talk. Rogue Exorcist. And then we have a Shadow Wisp. That's what that one thing was. Um, then we have the Gin, Crocodile, Cutthroat. Beautiful artwork on these standees, by the way. They have the Ghost standees for the regular standees. So we have a Gentleman, a Huntress. Uh, Viper Maiden, Warlord, Druidus, and a Magus. The uh, Plague Doctor, huh? Oh, yep, Guard Dog, and then a Mercenary. 
Yeah. It was a succubus. Suc okay, yeah, right. It was a succubus. I'm surprised she didn't have wings. So, yeah. Oh. So that snake. A naga. Oh, they got. That's what that is. That's a naga. And then a sea singer. Sea singer. Necromancer. It See, it is a satyr. I told you it was a satyr. Okay, but when you say yeah. satyr, it's usually, you know, like, at least has like the top half of a human and the bottom yeah. half of a goat. And they give you uh, bonuses and curses, curse tiles here. Like, the only time I got these when I, when I had folklore is when I actually got the mystery box, which the mystery box was just a player board holder. And it came with these tiles, so that's really neat that it gives you all these tiles. And it looks like there's some new ones, like Swift, things like that. So we got blessings and curses there, and then some other ones, so red foe, blue foe, purple foe, green foe, orange foe, purple foe. I'm just making things up again. Um, so yeah, and then here are some boards. These are the uh, tiles, should I say, and hopefully they are a lot better quality than the first printing of uh, Folklore. So what happened in the first printing is they were really super thin, and when I picked up my copy of Gen Con, they were actually giving out packs of updated tiles because they realized that it was too thin, and these feel wonderful, beautiful artwork, and they feel like a good thickness. Obviously it's not, not cardboard, it's paper per se, but it's printed on, double-sided, Beautiful, beautiful artwork. I am super impressed with this. Look at this one here. It looks like it's a traveling caravan. So I, I could probably use this in uh, the RPG game that I play, Pathfinder, to represent that their cavern, uh, caravan is resting. And there is a uh, city space. Obviously, it looks like this is a bar tavern. There's a church. Uh, this could be possibly a jail because it looks like cell doors there. I don't know if you can see it on the board. There you go. Yeah. So there's cells there. Uh, so of course you're going to have a church next to a bar next to a, a jail. Makes sense, right? Uh, there's a desert. Again, there's someone's home or something. Nice little building there. Uh, looks like it's just storage. Possibly stables. So there's that. Another uh, desert next to lava. There's that. Ooh, this looks like sewers. Yuck. Blah. Someone peed in the hole. So there's that. Here's some more sewers. So definitely I could use these. Oh, hospital. Oh, the hospital? Oh, look at that. Nice. Oh, doctor. Nice. Well, here is a ship. Uh, just an open tile on the back. Looks like this one ripped a little bit there. Um, but this would go on like this. I could totally use this for a pathfinder. Taking voyages, so I guess that's, that's definitely all. Voyages and you never know. Mm -hmm. um, and here is the spire. It looks like possibly ten different stages of the spire. So that's cool. Oh, I like that. Some kind of beautiful monument or something there. Mm -hmm. Altar, perhaps. I'm not sure. Underwater. Yeah, obviously it's underwater. Yes, but King Triton's throne, maybe. City of Atlantis. Here, yep. Uh, again, water scenario here. We're at wa water tiles. There's a jungle. Mm -hmm. It's a jungle, people! And then here is obviously like an opening to a cave that has all the affliction symbols on it, the different monster types. Uh, ruins, some kind of ruins, looks like. One side feels kind of rough. For the text, the other side it feels super smooth. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a lot odd. Uh, but look, if someone's camping in the wilderness, we could use that for in Pathfinder in case someone's uh, resting or camping. But here I go talking about how I can use these in another game when obviously I'm going to focus on playing this game too. Um, there's the standee board or the clips. There's all the different cards, initiative cards, and like I go through those, it's, it's boring right now. There's the hero boards here, or booklets, I say. I'm sure you're really interested in this Druidus. Mm -hmm. So there's the Druidus. Uh, you can pick either a summoner of the green ward or an earth binder. That's cool. Um, she starts with a silver sickle, call lightning, flat, flesh bind, vortex, and a prayer. So that's cool, you can look at that. And we have a gentleman, you can choose an investigator, or a, how do you pronounce that? Pugilist? Maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. 
All right. Uh, and then he starts with just a couple cards, a couple band-aids. So he's got a Fist of Cuffs and Gentleman's Bravado. So de uh, demoralize your foe and force them to roll dice or damage twice on their next attack and take the lower result. So basically just intimidating them. Huh, that's kind of neat. And we have the Huntress. Uh, hunter, Gatherer, or a Shaman. Okay. Uh, She's going to start with the Essence Purge in Savannah Hunter. So that's cool. She starts with a barbed spear. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, a magus. So basically, I think he'd be like a cleric or something. Order of the Alchemist. Stargazer. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, so we have Magi, Magus, Magus. Uh, Corriginist and Touch of the Magi. Uh, we have Wakata. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Wait, he can either have a prayer or a ritual. Here, you can look at these. We have vi vampire, or vampire, mm -hmm. Viper Maiden. Uh, choose a character focus. So again, you can be a spy or an assassin. That's totally cool. I know some people would want to play either one of those roles. Uh, so starting abilities is Eastern Stealth and Zoraster's Emissary. So you start with a... Re Recurved Bow and a Jambia, hopefully I pronounced that right, and a Bandage. Then we have a Warlord, Dervish or a Cyrusen, hopefully I pronounced that right. Uh, and obviously he has Ancient Art of War. Gain two initiative and you, have, you may attack before creatures during the first round of a skirmish. So that's cool there. Kopesh, hopefully I pronounced that right, is the weapon he has. He's going to get a shield token and a bandage token. It looks like he can be an apothecary, or, well, sorry, when he visits the apothecary, he can uh, look at things. So there's definitely, a, I don't think apothecary was something that you could visit in the regular uh, folklore game, so that's cool. Uh, lore tree there, yeah, okay. And we have the road cards, obviously. I choose one or two. Uh, there's... Town event card, so I don't think that's something that we have in the other one. We have the uh, cards here for the monsters and the heroes. So let's see about this. So we'll have the heroes first. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. So there's the Druidess. Obviously tells you all her starting points there. Some special abilities. Flip this over and there's her ghost figure, what it looks like. Gentleman, Huntress, Magus. Van Viper Maiden, I keep wanting to say Vampire. Viper Maiden. Warlord. Alright, and then let's see what the baddies are like. And tag and Anna Anatomist. Anatomist. So uh, we have Guildmaster. Mag Magma Guardian. Master Efret. Plague Doctor. C uh, Sea Prince. A succubus. So it shows wings here. Did not have wings. Uh, crocodile. Crocodilly. We got a cutthroat. Desert scorpion. A gin. Flesh construct. A naga. Which I'm used to a naga not having arms, so this is going to be throwing me off a little bit. A necromancer. We got an ooze. Ew, don't step in it. We don't know what it's made of. Ew, gross. Seder. Sea singer is gonna sing me a song. Mm. So basically, he would be like a um, what are those mythical creatures that would sing sailor? sirens? Sirens. So basically, he'd be a siren. Wisp. That's what that is. Uh, a rogue character. So it could be any one of those heroes that went rogue. And then we have a dust storm because you know we have to fight evil dust storms. So that's cool. And then quicksand. I like that. That that reminds me of an old movie where all you see is a hand sinking into the sand. So, yeah. So that's what comes in the Follow the Spire Kickstarter box when I, when you get the, uh, what was it called, the Executioner, right? So, yep, so the Executioner. So hopefully you enjoyed this unboxing, gives you an idea of what you're going to get in the box. I love this tray here to hold all my miniatures because they're kind of like in a mess in one of these boxes, and I would just like to reorganize that so it looks a lot nicer. So hey, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time.